Day 13 of the power outage, we need more power. Even without much sun, I'm wiring an extra 100 watts and I'll show you what I've done so far. Currently, I'm charging our tiny home backup battery system with 400 watts of solar from up there. And you may say, why is the solar up there when our tiny home is all the way over there? Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. These two panels here were never intended to have anything to do with our tiny home batteries. That third panel right there does our off-grid washroom batteries. And these two here are for something completely different. Believe it or not, those two panels would actually keep our van charged up. I did that with this little plug right here. Those solar panels would charge through a cable that runs under the ground right here and would come up close to the van. I would then plug this in and it would combine those solar panels with the ones already on our van. So when we were parked up, I could easily plug it in and we could get 600 watts of solar. That worked great for over three years, but we don't live in the van anymore. We're in the tiny home. And so those panels haven't been in use until now. Just the other day, I did a janky little setup to connect those panels to give us some charge on the tiny home. I didn't plan on running solar to our tiny home batteries until this summer, but this extended period of outage has been quite a lot and I don't wanna run the generator and spend a lot of money on gas. So I decided to go with a creative approach. But we still have no idea how long we're gonna be out from the grid. So that's where I wanna combine this extra 100 watts onto those 400 watts to get a little bit of extra power. Our great friend Roberts from Canadian Stealth, you should check out his channel, gave us this 100 watt panel the last time he was here because he couldn't fit any more on his van. It's a great little unit. I was gonna use it as extra solar on the container, but for now, I'll temporarily attach it to our solar. Adding this extra solar is so important to us because we have critical loads like our dehumidifier, which is very important, and I'll share that in another video. We have comfort loads like our coffee maker or toaster, which just helps life keep going, and also making sure we have longer gaps between charging up off of our generator. We've only spent $40 of gas in the past 13 days of the outage, whereas neighbors around us are spending over $100 a day. Big difference. Okay, to get this hooked up, I just need to grab a couple tools from the shop. This storm has shown thousands of people how important it is to have backup power, but that also goes for off-gridders. When we were off the grid for five years, we mostly ran off of solar, but we needed a backup for the winter, which was our generator. That was super important because things happen, things break, or the sun isn't shining. You want redundant systems. And you guys I know are really smart and have a lot of cool options to make up redundant power. So make sure you comment below and let me know what your options are for recharging. And even if you're planning to live off grid or something like that, comment below what you're gonna plan to do. I wish you guys could see how ridiculous I look with my camera on my forehead right now. Actually, you know what? I can show you. Anything for the shots, you know? Oh my God. Look at this. <laughs> oh, this looks so stupid. <laughs> Sadie, what did you get up to? Why are you black? <laughs> no, don't touch me. Don't touch me. So I've already turned off the solar to the house just to give it some protection. So this is how it currently goes. The positive on this side runs in to the positive of the batteries. The negative runs to this positive, then this negative runs to the negative to the batteries. But we will need to add one, so we're gonna take this negative, run it to the positive, and that negative comes in here. I don't know if you're still with me on that. This makes it a series circuit, that way I can achieve the amount of voltage I need to step up above my battery voltage. I don't know that I'm gonna keep this solar panel up here for very long. This is gonna be a temporary solution. So I'm not gonna fix it super secure. I'll use this uh, screw for one of its mounting and probably just mount the other side and leave the base. I haven't decided. So here's my positive from the new panel. I'm gonna attach it to my negative from this panel right there. And then I'm gonna attach my negative to the batteries, and then I'll test it before I tuck everything away and make sure everything's working right. 
Okay, as we wait for some sun to see what difference it makes, I want to show you a few things around the homestead from this storm. We had one damage this entire storm, which is very lucky considering we had a tree come down right in front of our house. The one damage is the cover on the side of the eaves trough got bent. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's the one damage. A tree came down right here and a branch just snagged the edge of it and uh, bent it. Very lucky. As for the chickens and the rabbits, as I said in the previous video, they're all good. Actually, you know what? Let's let them out today. They need a, a bit of a rummage. Come on. They're all good. And what's nice is this time of year, they don't require any power at all. During the winter time, I do use a heated water dish for them when it's like minus 30, because it's a lot of work bringing out a ton of water every day. But uh, right now, they don't require any power, so that's a bonus. Maple syrup production is still halted. I'm not working on it right now to conserve on propane. We use propane to heat our water in our tiny home, as well as cook on our propane stove. But I am collecting sap still, and there's still a ton flowing. I just bulldozed this front yard to our house last fall, and we had a ton of debris that I sent into the ground. So we're starting to get some sinkholes, which was expected. So as soon as the weather clears up, I can come over here and fill these in. I'm also working on a sketch for a drive shed to go here to store our equipment and our hay. It's gonna be about 30 feet long here. I need the storage. And I can't decide right now whether or not I wanna do it out of dimensional lumber or out of logs. So comment below and let me know which one you think I should do. I'm also working on a chicken coop design that's about three or four times the size of our current one because we're getting 20 more hens in a month. So I need more room. That setup was always meant to be temporary anyways. We just got really busy last fall, so I had to keep their current run, but they're gonna get a brand new one. Okay, let's check the before and after of our solar. This is probably the most amount of sun we're gonna get today because it's supposed to rain in a little bit. Let's open her up. Uh, yeah, looks good. It's actually working. We have over 60 volts, which makes sense because three of the 25 volt panels Obviously, we're not going to get a lot of current today because it is such a dim, overcast day, but we are getting a little bit more power input. It's only an extra 100 watts on a 400 watt system, so it makes sense. But this is going to be helpful because we don't know how long we're going to be out. So that means I can clean this up, tuck the wires away and screw that down. I am by no means an expert at this, and this is a fairly janky setup because I even used a wire moret here just to get a good connection. So do not follow what I'm doing. This is just me showing you what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. There are some things you have to keep in mind. These three solar panels are all similar voltages and currents. That way they work properly. That 270 amp hour panel that feeds the entire off-grid washroom is a completely different voltage and current. So if I attach these all together, they would go down to the base load of this and they wouldn't work as efficiently. That's just something to keep in mind if you're ever doing this sort of thing. This flexible panel is actually pretty cool. Look how much thinner and lighter it is. And it's only half of this size. Like, I mean, I know it's half the wattage, but it's pretty cool that Roberts has this on his van. I thought I'd give you guys a background of chickens taking a bath while I exit this video. Basically what I've learned from this whole experience is that, oh, you're gonna peck me, I know you are. This girl <laughs> is always so darn hungry. Anyways, from this whole experience, I've learned that a lot of people aren't prepared. Um, we saw all of these problems with stealing generators, running out of gas, gas stations didn't have gas either. And we realized how much we rely on power. Everything we do relies on power. And I'm so glad that I had all these backup systems ready, but I truly wasn't ready. I'd planned to do a solar uh, array for this battery system in the summer, but that's definitely moved up on my priority list and I'm gonna do this soon. We'll see how much longer this power outage lasts. There's actually a lot of hydro trucks heading down our road today, so that's a really good sign. But Logan and I are kind of having a lot of fun with it at the same time. We're enjoying the problem solving and the solutions we're coming up with. 
even though it's really at the expense of a lot of people who are struggling right now and with the flooding ending and their sump pups running out and them needing power for the sump pumps it's kind of sad it's kind of like a survivor's guilt that i have at the moment where i'm having fun and a lot of people are are struggling with their homes flooding so anyway it's just a little bit of a takeaway that i think we all need to be prepared a little bit more I'm gonna update you guys soon on how much more of a yield we're getting out of that extra panel to be able to do some extra things and run our critical systems. So make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't yet, make sure you click that thumbs up button. It really helps me out and get this video to other people who need to see it. And make sure you comment below and let me know your redundant systems and if I should do a log or a dimensional lumber drive shed. I really appreciate you watching to this point and I'll see you later.